Hey everyone, this is a technique I came up with to create panels really quickly uh, using ZBrush. I tried the panel loop method, but it was always kind of softening the corners on all the panels. Couldn't figure out a way to actually harden the corners even when I turn polish all the way down. So here, for example, if I dynamesh the sphere and then subdivide it, maybe once and delete lower. So this could be maybe a shape that you'd want to add panels to and separate it and have kind of round shapes continuing on to corners. So a mix of both on the same surface on the same panel. So just create those sharp corners here on the borders. So delete hidden on that. And now using masking, that's the, uh, the best thing about this technique is that you use the mask to define your shapes as opposed to making a Dynamesh surface to bring into Maya and then use the quad draw to trace manually, which I find to be very time consuming. This method here just goes around that, just lets you use masks instead. So it's just like panel loops would be, except it would hold the sharp corners. You can polygroup that. So what if you want to add sort of a, a panel with a slice curve? You would just do that here. Of course, ZBrush doesn't like to add slice curves symmetrically. So what I would do in this case is I would uh, mirror and weld, but of course it, it would ignore one side because ZBrush has a bias to one side for the mirroring. So I would just actually flip the object and then mirror and weld it. And then I would polygroup that, control W. So now for the main point of this technique, which is to use masking to hold the corners on these polygroups to tell ZBrush where the corner actually is. So now I'd use Polish by Features with Open Circle here, so it uses the full strength. When I run that, you will see that the border gets smooth, of course, while this kind of stays where it is. But with the masking we've done earlier, it actually held that corner there. Same thing is happening up there, all this gets averaged out. Of course we get that crease when you turn off Polyframe, but that crease is not going to cause any artifacts since we're going to be zero meshing down to a very low resolution, and all that will get averaged out. And zero mesher actually respects corners like these, so it would kind of automate the process of retopology. Actually, I realized I forgot to hold the corners on the actual silhouette of the shape, so I'd go around here with a rectangular mask, and I would just grab that last vertex. Of course, it looks like it's not doing anything almost, but it's adding that mask. It's very subtle, but it actually does add it. So now I'd run uh, polish by features again. You see, it holds. I still have my mask from earlier here. I'll run it a few times. That's good enough. So now I group split that, and as you can see we have really sharp corners there. And I don't know of any other technique that would generate panels this fast that are sharpened like that. Panel loops just smooths things out a lot. So now I would zero mesh these half. Actually it fails right there, so actually I'm going to split and then I'll do one at a time. So this one that failed here, I'd zero mesh on its own. For some reason that seems to fix it. So this would be really time consuming to model manually and zero mesher saves a lot of time. Uh, sometimes it fails like that. Zero mesh it to same and that seems to flip around the direction of topology. So we'll get a mismatch of uh, edge count here, but that can be fixed later in Maya easily. Sometimes you end up something like that, but you still want to change the topology. So what I would do is I would just mask this, create a poly group there, and then I would use keep groups, zero measure, and smooth groups off. Use same. Go same, then half. Alt clicking the zero mesh button uses another algorithm that's much cleaner. As you can see, it held that corner. You can also use Z-Monder to slide things around. Sometimes when you zero mesh down, uh, it kind of eats away the corner like that because it has a stretched quad. So I found that modifying the topology just a little bit would make zero mesh consider that corner and preserve it better. Sometimes it doesn't want to go anymore. I think it's good enough. So now I just merge everything down. So I have everything merged. Of course, we have a little bit of disorder on the vertices. Let's just smooth that out by going to mask it and then mask by border. And I'll select all the geometry borders for all the parts. So in this case, I have the internal parts exposed. So I could just run maybe a polish below that can go a little bit too strong. You can also go to deformation instead and then use the smooth, which will go a little bit slower. 
that you can stop in the, in the middle because polished by one here is already too intense. So smooth kind of lets you dial it in a little bit more nuanced. So now I have my panels done. I'll export them out and then bring them to Maya. So now I'll separate the panels into different objects. And then I'll start with this one here to modify slightly because it was a little bit broken. So I'll just start collapsing, optimizing a little bit, and then I will start moving these around in component mode. So the edge count mismatch here between those two parts is because zero mesher just doesn't like to make quad topology that are matching on both sides of polygroups. Uh, and even if you're in ZBrush and you use free border, that would create a lot of triangles. And uh, in this case, making a mesh, not for a game, low res, but for film or commercial work where it's all quads and it's all subdivided. This wouldn't be an issue. So once you extrude and bevel, you can align that and it will work fine. So you can slide. I'm using shortcuts here to actually slide the vertices. You can slide on edge or on surface. So right now my shortcuts for the slide, I have model toolkit, slide off to Alt A, slide edge Z, slide surface A. So I'm constantly toggling between all these modes to move vertices around. And it's just really, really fast. Instead of going through the menu here, Of course, this is not the most beautiful topology, but so it's not like going to rig to deform like a, a character. It's actually a hard surface, so it's all the same skinning. So now I'll just combine everything back again. So now that I have everything combined, I'll go ahead and extrude on local Z. And you see that everything kind of overlaps in the back there, all the panels. So I just use an offset. So I'll invert the normals now. So now it's time to bevel all these panels. But I don't want to have to select all these edges for the borders, so I'm using a tool to automate this by selecting all the hard edges. This is a built-in feature in Maya, but this tool called AM Tools uh, lets you do a lot of things, including click one button to do this process. So as you can see, it selected all the hard edges, but sometimes when you do modifications to the mesh, you create accidental hard edges where you don't want them. So in this case, those two right here, I'll just smooth them, then unselect, clear history, select hard edges again. So you know I have all the edges I want to bevel. So now I'll start bevel, select the mesh and see the wireframe. Now I'll turn chamfer off and then set the mitter ring to none, because if you don't set it to none, you'll see things like that here. If it's set to auto, it will interpret each corner differently. So you see these ones are getting this kind of topology. And then this one's getting the one that we actually want, because once we connect this vertex to this vertex, we'll get a quad. So you'll see now when I change the mitter ring to none, all the corners will get the same treatment, which is the desired topology. Now if you put in sub D, you'll see that some of the vertices are merging. Go ahead and merge vertices set to off, and then they will get separation back. So of course I'm using chamfer off, because that will hold the edge better, and it will keep the original shape intact. So if you see here, this was our low poly look initially, the sharpness there. Uh, if you had chamfer on, it will eat away the shape. And if you add one segment, still will smooth out the shape, which makes it a pain in the ass if you later want to change your mind about how it looks and you want to modify it. And unbeveling this is always tough because the shape gets smoothed. So instead, I'll just turn chamfer off and then play with the fraction there. So now you get the same effect, but at any time you want to change your mind, you unbevel this. You just delete that and you're back to the original shape. So now I need to connect those vertices to get rid of the engons so we get all quads again. There are multiple ways to do this. Of course, you can do it manually, which works great. Uh, but I find that sniping those vertices can be a pain in the ass sometimes. So just select all the engons with this tool. You can also do this in Maya natively. So now I'll just triangulate all of them and then I quadrangulate. And as you can see, all these were quadded, actually, except for that one right here. That one, I'll just have to delete this edge manually. So now I double check if we have any engons. We have this one right here. Same thing. Now to enable back symmetry and try to get rid of the pinching that's happening here. So I'll enable my slide again with the shortcut. Actually, most of the time that's not even enough. So let me just add a center edge. Still getting a little bit of the pinching. So I found that I could just push the vertex where the pinch is happening a little bit inside. And that does help it. But a lot of times it's not enough, so you'd have to push the entire corner in. As you can see, that really did help a lot. See, if you look up at it, this vertex is going out too much. Just flatten it. Let's push this panel back. Hold D and click the face to snap the vertex there. Push it in. Now 
will go in and bridge the gap that we're having earlier with zero mesher because the edge count mismatch on both sides of the panels. So use a soft select in component mode. I'll just do that, bring them closer. So I'm happy with how this looks. I'll start UVing it. But of course you don't want to sit around and select your UV borders manually, which is a really pain in the ass. So I found a way to UV almost automatically. Uh, I can show you it's based on the hard edges that we used earlier to bevel. So take a look here, if I click the hard edges button again, we still have that from earlier. So if we used bevel before with offset on, it would have actually smoothed out the edges and we would have lost the hard edges, which means we would have had to define those UV seams manually later. But in this case, I preserved that and also preserved the shape sharpness. So now I could just do a quick projection and then select the hard edges, cut them there, go to object mode, hit my shortcut for unfold. And voila, we have all the UVs. They're not perfect by any means, but the edges are where they're supposed to be. It's just the layout that isn't perfect, but the unfold is actually pretty good for the most part. You can see, we can still improve it. Select the bigger UV shells, get them out of the way. And we end up with these over here, the ones we want to straighten. Let's just pack them real quick in the same direction. So now I go around and rotate these in a kind of a horizontal way. So I have all these UV shells that need to be straightened to save UV space. I'll run the straighten UVs option. As you can see, one of them failed down here. So I could just unfold that again, and then I'll use a different way to straighten it out. I think it was bending too much. So I could just select this edge, strain shell, and then select the shell again and straighten UVs. Selecting all those borders again, packing them, and then turning off shell pre-rotation. So all the rotations we define will be kept. So for example, turn off symmetry here, rotate these like that. And now all these rotations will be preserved Shell pre-rotation set to off, and then shell pre-scaling set to preserve 3D ratios, which will actually pack them in accordance to their, their textile density, their size and space. Hit apply. So now that I'm happy with the, the panels, I have them UV'd and we have a usable pack. I can throw this into Substance Painter real quick so we can see what it would look like with the materials on. But really quickly before that, if you're handing this off to a rigger, they know that this would have Sub-D enabled for render, of course, at render time. This would look like in the viewport. It's really sharp. It's not that cool. Now that you're done with the UVing and you've used the hard edges to define UV seams, you don't need to have them anymore. You can just smooth the entire mesh and now we will get those panels again. And this is what the rigger would see and the animator would see. Of course, you lost the hard edges. They're not there anymore, but you have the UVs complete anyway, so you don't care that much. So this would stay light. It wouldn't be in sub-D, but it would still show the bevels, at least approximation of them. And they will get clean once you put them in sub-D at render time. Now for Substance Painter, I can just smooth this mesh twice, which will approximate what sub-D looks like in Maya. Usually it's two iterations of subdivision. So I send this Substance Painter. As you can see, it's pretty usable and looks clean. I uh, forgot to fix this side here, so we're having this gap, but if I did fix it, it would have looked like this side. UVs are quickly done, but they can always be improved, but it was almost an automatic process of selecting the hard edges. We'll do a quick bake. I'm baking the mesh onto itself. Holds up pretty well. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.